We want to find the GCF of 50 and 60. First thing we're going to do is factor trees. We need to write prime factorizations. So we've got 5 times 10 and then 2 times 5. 60 would be, uh, let's say, 6 times 10, and then the 6 is 2 times 3, and 10 is 2 times 5. Again, with your factor trees, you can do them any way you want. Um, you should get the same factors in the end. But that's not our prime factorization, is it? We need to write it out. So 50 equals what? 2 times 5 times 5. Okay, and 60 equals? 2 times 3 times 5. Okay. Now we're looking for step 2, what they have in common, right? I see a 2 in common here and a 5. Okay. Um, so how do we find the GCF? Two times, uh, two times five. Two times five, and we get ten. ten. It's pretty easy, right? All right. It is going to get a little more complicated. Oh no. We're going to run into a lot of them with variables. In fact, the when we start talking about polynomials, the polynomials are all going to have variables in them. So we're going to have to be able to find the GCF of numbers that have polynomials, or I'm sorry, that have variables with them. Um, to start with, we'll talk about polynomials later. To start with, we're just going to look at the numbers. Forget about the x's and the y's and the z's right now. Let's do everything exactly the same we did in the last example with the numbers. So we factor the 20, we get 2 times 10 and 5 times 2. Um, and again, the order doesn't really matter. 45 would be... 5 times 9, 5 is prime, 9 is not, 3 times 3. All right, so we're going to write the prime factorizations. So 20 is going to equal 2 times 2 times 5. Now notice that I left a little space here next to the 20. Because we're not really doing 20, we're doing 20xy, right? So what should I multiply this by to get the x and the y in there? How about times x and times y? So all we're doing by adding these, by actually multiplying by the variables here, is we're just going to add those onto the list for our prime factorization. Does that make sense? Okay. So for the 45, yz, the 45 part is 3 times 3 times 5, right? But then we also need the yz, so we're going to do times y and times z. So we're going to, yeah, we're looking for common factors, not just with the numbers now, but also with the variables. So looking at the numbers, what do they have in common? Uh, five. Just the 5, right? Yeah. How about the variables? Y. Y. They both have a Y in it. Do they both have an X in it? No. No, so we're not going to circle the X, we're not going to circle the Z, because they don't both have it. All right, so now our GCF, what we do is we multiply everything they have in common together. Well, if we multiply 5 times Y, what do we get? There you go. This one looks easy, doesn't it? No. All right, so we're going to start by doing a prime factorization. So we've got 3 times 5 here. We've got 2 times 7 here. Um, so we write out our prime factorization. 15 equals 3 times 5. 14 equals 2 times 7. And what do they have in common? Nothing. So they have nothing in common. Is a GCF no, zero? One. One. They do have one in common. So we need to be sure we remember that when they don't have anything in common, it just looks like they don't have anything in common. But they do because there's always a one in there, right? This is the same thing as 3 times 5 times 1 and 2 times 7 times 1. So they always have a one in common. So if there is nothing else in common, the GCF is one. I'm going to give you this first, and then we're going to look at why what we're going to fill in the blank here works. So when we're using variables with exponents, we're going to use the exponent. So like, let's say we have like something with an x to the third power in it on one of them, and we have something else with an x to the fifth power in the other one. How many x's would those have in common? Three, right? So if there's three of them here and five of them here, we can match three of them up together, and then there's two extras in this one, right? So which exponent are we going to use? Are we going to use the larger or the smaller? smaller. We're going to use the smaller exponent. Okay? So when we have variables where we have more than one of the same variable, 
we're going to use the smaller exponent or small list. I'm going to write smallest just in case. Smaller would just mean that there's two of them. Um, in case we're comparing three of them, we're going to use the smallest of all three. Let's do an example to see why. Okay, so first of all, focus on the numbers. How do we factor 75? That's three quarters, right? 75 cents, so 3 times 25. And then 5 times 5. And then looking at the 30, we're going to have 10 times 3. 3 is prime. 10 we keep factoring. 2 times 5. Um, so writing the prime factorization, we want to be kind of careful here. It's not just 75, but it's 75x squared y to the third. So the 75 part is going to be what? 3 times 5 times 5. Okay, the th um, and then we have how many x's? We have 2 x's. So times x times x times y times y times y. Now, later on, once we get a little more comfortable with this, I'm not going to make you keep writing out all the variables. You can use that shortcut that you just wrote down. But for now, I want you to write all these out. We're going to... And, and that's going to help us see why what we wrote down works. Um, for the 30 part, we have 30x to the third, y to the fifth. And so the 30 is going to be 2 times 3 times 5. And then how many x's? Okay, and then how many y's? All right, so we need to figure out what they have in common. Let's look at the numbers first. What do they have in common for the numbers? Five. Five and a three, right? I see a five there, and I see a threes there. Uh, and then we've got X's, two of them, okay? And then, yeah, it looks like we'll have three Y's that are going to go together. And that's it. That's all they have in common. All right, so we're going to write out our GCF. The GCF is going to be what we get... Uh, the number part is going to be what times what? Three times, Three times five. five, which is 15. And then the variable part, how many x's do we have in common? Four. I mean two. Two, so it's going to be x squared, right? And then how many y's do they have in common? Three. Three. Now, the shortcut for this is we do the number part just like we did here. There's no sh shortcut for that. You need to do that. But the shortcut for the variables is if you look at the x's, there's two x's here and there's three x's here. Which one's smaller? The two. So it's going to be x squared. There's three y's here and five y's here. Which one's smaller? The three. So it's going to be y to the third power. Okay, so the shortcut with the variables is we're looking for the one with the smallest exponent on it, and that's the one we're going to use. Okay, in this case, it just happens to be that they both come from this term here, but it could be x squared from here, and it could have been the x to the fifth here if this y was bigger. All right? All right, first thing we want to do is factor trees. Um, so 36. We actually did 36 before, right? Since we did that already, I'm not going to do that again. We know 36 is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. If you look up at an earlier example, you'll see that. Uh, 72, we haven't done that yet. So do 8 times 9, that would be a good way to do it, right? And then 4 is 2 times 2. All right, so there's 72 is going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. And then our 99, 99 would be 9 times 11. And then 9 is 3 times 3. You guys agree with that? Yeah. So 99 is going to be 3 times 3 times 11. Now, what are we looking for here? <coughs> Can I circle these twos here? Yeah, no. no, why not? All right, so when we're finding the GCF of three numbers, or four numbers, or five numbers, it has to be in all of them. So what do they all have? Three. They, both, they all have two threes. I'm going to make this simple. I'm just going to circle them like this. Is that fair? You guys know what's going on there? So they all have two threes. Do they all have anything else in common? 
Can I take one of these twos down here and move it down here so they all have a two? No, you can't move them around, right? So what's the GCF going to be? No. They both, they all have two threes, three times three, which is, how about, let's go with nine, yeah. <laughs> all right, last one. This one looks fun, doesn't it? It, it, it looks messy, it's not so bad. Start with factor trees. Factor trees. 54, how, what do I multiply to get 54? 9 times 6? Thanks. All right, so I've got the factor trees done here. Next thing we're going to do is write the prime factorizations. I'll do that real quick. Here's our prime factorizations for the number parts. We're going to use the shortcut for the variables. All right, so uh, remember when we're looking at the variables, well, we'll talk about it when we get to it. Let's talk about the numbers first. What numbers do they all have in common? Three and two. I see a two on all of them. I see a three on all of them. Is that it? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so our GCF is going to be... 2 times 3, which is 6, right? Okay, and then how about the variable part? Let's, let's just go one letter at a time. Let's start with A's. Uh, how many A's are going to be in my GCF, Amir? No. So we want to use the smallest. What's the smallest exponent on A? A, 2. Just the A to the first power right here. There's only one A here, right? That's the smallest. How about B's? There's four here, there's two here, and there's three here. So what's the smallest? B squared. B squared. How about C's? Uh, no, they're not all the same. These two have four. This one has zero. What's the smallest? The zero. So there are no C's in our GCF. 